with coyote sir. Sleeping is very essential for our body. So it's very important to monitor our sleeps. The amount of sleep varies from person to person, but research have shown anywhere between six to eight hours. So if we are sleeping more than nine hours, that shows that our body is breaking down more than on average. So we have to rethink our lifestyle that what is causing our body to break down more than average. So if you are getting a sleep between six to eight hours, that is the optimal state of our body. Again, it's not going to be easy when we create any changes, but if we are persistent, we can create those positive changes in our life. Then next slide is on reducing physical fatigue. So research have shown enthusiasm decreases fatigue. So in army, we have a saying, if you are not motivated, then fake it. So if you are not enthusiastic, try to teach your body to be enthusiastic. Like we can fake the enthusiasm until our body learns how to be enthusiastic. Relaxation is the absence of all tension and effort. And particularly our eyes consume one fourth of our, all our nervous energies. So practicing Kyocerg or body scan helps us to achieve a deep relaxation and recharge our bodies. While working, make sure we are working in as comfortable posture as possible. So check yourself four to five times a day. Am I making my work harder than actually it is? Am I using muscles that have nothing to do with the work I'm doing? So let's say when you're sitting on the chair, every half an hour we can reflect or every 20 minutes we can reflect are my legs in the relaxed posture so making sure the muscles which are not required for that particular task are at a relaxed state helps us to keep our relaxation states higher and then measure accomplishments by the energy level at the end of the day not just by the amount of hours we work but how much satisfaction, how much enthusiasm have that work brought to us by the end of the day. So I would like you to write down on a piece of paper or a notebook, some of the activities which you engage in on a daily basis on those five dimensions, as we discuss the physical, emotional, social, spiritual, and creative aspects. And this could be also a good time for you to ask questions. So I would say take five minutes to write down the different aspects or different activities you do on those five levels. And then we can reconvene after five minutes and have a discussion. So I have put a timer on for five minutes. So we are going to discuss what each one of us are engaging in all those five dimensions.
hope everyone is writing down what you do for each of these five uh, things here. I wrote it down myself too. It's, it's a good exercise. Okay, one more minute is left. So if you can, if you don't feel comfortable sharing those on video or audio, you can just type and put that in the chat box. And Mehulji can read those for us. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, you can just write it in your chat box. If uh, you don't have any issues sharing it with us, with everyone, or or only with uh, Sachinji, really, I mean, you just want to share with him, that is fine too. And I'm sure it will stay anonymous. So if you share it with him, it will just give him a chance to discuss on it without uh, sharing your name. So please feel free to share your activities, what you do for your physical needs, emotional needs, social, spiritual, and creative needs. And also, if you have any questions, feel free to ask at this time. Yes. Yeah, this workshop is for you. So I want you all to have the most benefit from this workshop. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right, uh, can you please state an emotional activity? An example? Yes, so for emotional resiliency, emotional aspects of the resiliency, some examples could be spending time with friends, other students, checking in with your friends, your family members, volunteering at social clubs like Rotary Club, uh, Lawrence Club, or even volunteering at the city councils. Um, or sometimes if you don't have other friends or if you are in a place where you can't talk, you can just read a book and then connect with the character. So just reflecting on how the character in the novel or the story went through their own emotional journey, that could also help us to boost the emotional resiliency. I guess anything you do to, you know, treat your emotions. We all have a lot of emotions. So what, what do you do when you, you know, you want to become happy or when you are sad or. Yeah, yeah I, I saw it. Yeah, Sachinji, we have got a few responses in the chat box. So, I are you are you able to read them? I let me see if I can. Yes. Yes. Okay.
Okay, so it, I got really good uh, responses in the chat box, and I'm so glad that our participants and students are engaged on activities on all those five components. Some of them are not doing all the five components, but this could be the beginning. So even though you are doing on one or two components, now you can, you have more better idea how to incorporate the other factors. I got interesting question where one participant asked why it is much easier to be negative than positive. So what research have found evolutionary our brain is designed to be negative because it was really important for our survival as a species. So for example, when, when we were forest dwellers and when, when we were leaving our caves to get more food or water, we always were extra careful with snakes or wild animals. So our brain created more scenarios for negativity than positivity. That way we are more careful with all the dangers which are present in the outside world. But in the modern day, modern society, that sort of a mindset is not much needed because it's more predictable. Our life is more organized. But since we have our wiring in our brain done evolutionary, we have to rewire it. And that is the concept called neuroplasticity. So as far as we are engaging in those five dimensions of resiliency, our brain rewires to be more positive than negative. But if we are not taking intentional actions on those five dimensions, the natural tendency of the brain is to stay negative because historically, evolutionary, it helped human being as a race to survive. I hope that answered the question. And if you have follow up, you can type up on the chat box or you can ask and uh, unmute and ask. I think that was a great answer. You know, I didn't know about it. Uh, but uh, if someone has a follow up question, they can certainly ask. Um, I have a question. Sure. Is it possible that you can like do physical and emotional at the same time doing like one thing like when you work out you get like a physical good and then you also get emotional yes most of these dimensions they have a huge overlap so they don't exist in complete isolation so what research found that when we do anything on the spiritual aspects it covers all the four aspects so there are activities where let's say when we are doing when we go for a long run we also feel emotionally good because of the neurochemicals which are released in our body so most of the times when we are engaging in either of the activities they help to boost a little bit of all the other four but prime so it could be like okay 90 percent it's feel uh, it's improving our physical component of the resiliency and 10 percent the emotional component of the resiliency so we have to be intentional in designing our activities that way all the five components are met 100% on a daily basis. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Okay, so there was a follow-up question that how negative thinking helped earlier people survive. So one of the examples which I gave was like when you are going for food, search for food, and even when they saw, let's say a branch lying on the ground, they instantly thought of a snake because it's better to be careful even from a branch instead of being relaxed. That way, when you, even though out of 10 sightings, you can see the snake only one time, but if we are very relaxed and not thinking negatively, not taking the branch as a snake, 
there are chances that we could be bit by the snake when snake is actually there. So, so that's how the negative thinking helps humans to survive by making them more, way more careful, way more cautious than what was needed in that particular context. But these days in the physical world, we rarely, if you are living in a modern society, we don't see snakes. So if you're seeing a rope or if you're seeing a branch, we, our brain does not take it automatically as a snake. But what that negativity, since our brain is wired, now we are taking more negativity from a psychological aspect. So now that we don't have to worry about snakes or fighting wild animals, we are worried about what my friend is thinking or am I dressed uh, nicely or uh, do I have the same car or do I have a nice TV? What my friends will think when they see a smaller screen at my house as compared to their screens. So now that we don't have those physical uh, risks in our day-to-day -day life, our brain is becoming more neurotic and thinking more negatively for the psychological aspects of the living. So again, like when we are engaged in these five dimensions of resiliency that helps us to break the cycle of neuro neurotic thinking that helps us to bring more positivity in our life. So now the other question is, is there a way we can benefit from negative or guarded thinking in this modern world? Yes. What research have found that optimal level of stress is the best strategy. So for example, let's say we are preparing for our SAT exam. Now, if we are completely positive and completely relaxed, then we are not going to put the most, the best effort which we could. So in research, what they have found that our productivity or our performance on the test increases up to a certain level of stress and then it starts to decrease. So a combination of stress and hard work can lead the best results. So yes, we need some stress, but it has to be to the level where our body can handle it. And the more we can engage in these resiliency practices, our capability to handle stress also increases. So the more resilient we are, the more we could strive for higher achievement or higher goals. That's definitely right. Uh, last week we had a, a lecture from Dr. Pankaj Jain from India and he explained the same thing using example of the balloon. If you remember, if when you put air in the balloon up to a certain level, it's good. That is basically a stress, you know, and after, after then, you know, it, it becomes negative for your body and mind. Okay, now there is another question on how do I get into the field of mental health and psychology? Now, like when we talk about mental health field in United States, as we know, most of the professions in United States are based on licensure. So to practice, so for example, in India, we can practice, we can become a mental health counselor, without even a license, but not in the United States. To get a license in the United States as a mental health counselor, we need to finish our master's degree in clinical mental health counseling. And if you want to practice as a licensed psychologist, then you need to finish your PhD in the field of psychology. So we can talk more. You can just Google me and you can email me and I can send you more information, more specific information relate, related to uh, the programs and the licensure process. Is uh, sorry, disturb. Is anyone sharing the screen here? Or is this your screen, uh, Sachinji? No, no, this is not my screen. Okay, so, so somebody else looks like sharing the screen. Can you please take your screen off? We are sharing this picture of uh, Disney characters. I think by mistake, otherwise I'll have to stop. All right. Okay. 
did i miss any of the questions mehul ji uh, in the chat box uh, no i mean i think uh, the question they asked privately to you because most of things i see here there are no questions oh, okay. it's just yeah uh, yeah it's not being shared with me so um i have one more question um sure. like do you like your line of work like does it give you happiness or help like other people or something like that can you please repeat your question like are you happy with the line of work that you do like like what kind of feeling does it give you yes so again that's the very like early in my life i made a so to say a promise to myself that if a day doesn't feels like a sunday you make some changes so life is short enough to live not to be able to live uh, fully so i i feel i'm very fortunate to be in the line of work where i could work um with individuals and help them to to so to say move over the road blocks so it's not like they don't have the potential but certain factors certain they just limited they put a cap on their own potential so i just help them to remove that cap or extend that cap to the next level where they can reach and reach their full potential thank you uh, sachin ji uh, i have a question yes minul ji uh, 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 what is the pomororo technique can you talk about pomororo technique little bit thank you yes so pomororo technique was designed by a scientist in italy and pomodoro essentially in italian means a tomato so how he came up with was he was making some sort of a dish from tomatoes where he started to put a timer so then he found out that using the timer it was easier for him to make this particular tomato sauce and then other scientists picked it and did some research in human resources field so pomodoro technique essentially the benefit is so let's say when i am preparing when i'm grading or let's say from a student perspective let's say when they got a 2 hour homework in mathematics so instead of being stressed out about the homework i just put a timer for 35 minutes and start to work on the homework after 35 minutes when the timer goes off i just reflect on what i finished in the last 35 minutes so if i haven't been able to finish to the expectation then i already have a goal for my next 35 minutes that okay in the first 35 minutes i was only able to finish one question but i'm going to make a full effort to finish five questions in the next 35 minutes but before i start my next 35 minutes i take a 5 minutes break so in that 5 minutes i make sure i drink some water i do some sort of a physical activity so maybe just going up and down the stairs um checking with myself like i am are my muscles relaxed so just like doing a brief chair yoga brief uh, posture related yoga whatever you could do in those 5 minutes so hydration is one important thing and then doing some sort of a physical activity is another important thing in those 5 minutes and then you again put a timer for 35 minutes and then you work non stop for another 35 minutes and then you can compare all this 35 minute cycle did you end up becoming more productive after every 35 minutes since we are creating more accountability for every 35 minutes did that answer the question yes sachin ji thank you so much and in that 5 minutes we can do anything right we can reflect on whatever we have done earlier or we can take a break and you know some exercise or you know uh, water or anything right it's basically yeah. idea is to take a break yeah. and so reflect because, yes uh, and I, i i won't say you can do anything because let's say if we put a you you or something then it may be tough to be very intentional what we do in those 5 minutes so the reason i say water because when we are hydrated we don't feel that hungry sometimes hunger even though we are not hungry but we still feel 
a strong desire to eat something and that's not about hunger that's about dehydration so keeping our body hydrated help us to stop us from eating when we don't have to eat and then doing something physically that's really important so those two things are really important and if you have extra time you can do other stuff but make sure you don't go take your break more than five minutes because then it will lead to more distraction thank you so much thank you any other questions concerns I know we are almost at the end of our time today. Well, thank you, Samniji, for this opportunity. Thank you, Mehul Saji, for uh, facilitating the session. You all have a really nice day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sachinji. That was really very informative, very, very helpful session. I'm sure uh, kids appreciated it and uh, it can go a long way in this time of stress and pandemic uh, to examine yourself on these five dimensions and get your resiliency back. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was really good. Uh, Samni ji, what do you want to say? Sachin ji, thank you very much. You have notice for बच्चों को बहुत अच्छा एक थैंक यू मेहुल साहब कार्यक्रम दिया है और मैं सोचती हूं कि बच्चों ने इसे अप्रिशिएट किया है इतने सारे उन्होंने अपने लिखकर आपने जो पूछा उसके बारे में लिखकर के भी भेजा है तो ये अच्छी बात है कि बच्चों ने उसको अप्रिशिएट किया है और अपने व्यूज भी दिए हैं कि वो क्या कर रहे हैं अभी इस समय में घर में लॉकडाउन में बैठे हुए क्या कर रहे हैं और क्या हो रहा है उनका सब कुछ बताया है तो मैं सोचती हूँ कि बच्चों ने जरूर इसको अच्छा समझा है और आपको धन्यवाद कि आपने इतने अच्छे ढंग से इस विषय में बच्चों को बताया है सामनी जी एक अनाउंसमेंट में शॉर्ट ओस वी हैव पोस्टेड द द लिंक फॉर द अटेंडेंस सो किड्स कैन यू प्लीज फिल इट आउट इट शुड टेक ओनली टेन सेकंड्स � uh, and 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 charitra group that's it we would appreciate it thank you thank you so much mandami namaskar swami ji ah mangal paath suna denge mandami namaskar swami swami ji ha chatari mangalam arhanta mangalam siddha mangalam sahu mangalam keveli pannattu mangalam chatari 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 विघ्न हरण मंगल करण स्वाम भिक्षुनो नाम गुण ओलख समरण किया सर अचिंत्या काम सर अचिंत्या काम सर अचिंत्या काम हां अरहम थैंक यू एवरीवन फॉर अटेंडिंग एंड वी होप दैट यू गॉट समथिंग टुडे एंड वी होप दैट यू कैन कम बैक अगेन सेम टाइम सेम लिंक नेक्स्ट सैटरडे थैंक यू यू ऑल हैव अ गुड वीकेंड थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सर सर मुझे थैंक यू नमस्कार नमस्कार स्वामी हाँ सर हाँ सोनी नमस्कार हाँ कान्हा जी